All right. Welcome back to the Trading Triangle. We've been away for a little while. Do some traveling. Actually, I think missing out on some trading. So I'm excited to be back. Sean, good to see you. How are you doing, sir? Yeah, good. Fresh from uh, my trip back from New York. So yeah, I haven't really listened to the markets too much. So it should be a nice little return for, for tonight. Yeah, good stuff. How about you, Kay? Well, I was not traveling like you guys, but yeah, it's been you know good to be back on the channel finally. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And uh, glad you had a good trip, Sean. I mean, I traveled across the country. You traveled around the globe, basically, or across the globe. So a lot of busyness. And uh, it's good, actually. I don't know about you, but I felt like the airports were packed and airlines were packed and people were hustling about. Do you feel the same sense? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's been like that for some time now. I've had a few trips this year, and every time the, the airport's been packed, delays obviously are definitely there. So the, the demand is there, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. I thought it would be lighter than it was. So we'll see if that's any anecdotal evidence um, as we head into the end of the year here. But uh, yeah, should we jump right into the charts and get, get after it? Let's do it. All right, real quick before we do, quick disclaimer. Uh, none of this is financial advice or trading advice. We are three traders just providing this information for entertainment, educational purposes only. Do appreciate you joining the Trading Triangle every week and make sure you subscribe and hit the like button below. Helps us get out to as many traders as we can. And uh, yeah, let's get into some charts. Uh, we've got quite a week ahead, lots of earnings, good stuff to look forward to. And um, last week some pain actually so this actually might set up nice for this week right we've had uh, a bit of a, a pullback sean you and i were trading maybe it's our, our fault we weren't around to prop markets up with our money i don't know but, uh, yeah, it must be that, must be that. <laughs> i mean it was tech right and we're always talking tech so yeah we're back so maybe that'll give us a little a little bit of a green uh tint next week i'm not we, sure we need the green man we need the green look at the microsoft had a phenomenal earnings, still down like 0.58% for the week. Yeah, yeah, that kind well, of... Red pen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. It spoke volumes, the fact that we had these big tech names still down. And um, yeah, you know, I've been talking a lot about communication sector, XLC is the ETF, and we got Meta and Google in there, and uh, that was not a good week. So um, that being said, I think there's some buying opportunities uh, for the longer term investors and hitting some key levels. So I'm sure we'll talk about some of those. Um, and looking at the fear and greed index, not great. Hit extreme fear. So if you're, uh, if that makes you uncomfortable, then we are in the extreme part of the uncomfortable sector. Uh, the one thing I posted actually last week was remember, you know, the saying isn't, uh, you know, to to sell everything when everybody's fearful, right? So um, I don't think that's the saying. The saying is to buy when others are fearful and, you know, be wary when others are greedy. And so here we are, potential some buying opportunities. We'll see. It is not an easy scenario. Um, I will say I wrote this week for Wolf Financial about falling knives and not trying to catch a falling knife and waiting for support. And I think that's really kind of where my head's at right now is looking for the opportunities, but not trying to catch anything as it's dropping. Um, what do you think, Kay? Uh, this is VIX at 21.27. Do you like it there? Does that make you I love it. I love it. Because uh, this is a time that you actually, so this, if you think about it, right, this is a time that you actually add to your long-term portfolio. Many of your loves, many of the stocks that you love today are probably down below their 200 moving average. So take Tesla, for example. I'm not going to go too much into detail, but Tesla is below its 200-day moving average. It was trading at 100 and, $101 at the start of the year, went to $300. Now it's trading at 2045, something like that. That's a good pullback, right? So if you have a higher cost basis, slowly dollar cost average. So I like to buy stocks, especially long-term portfolio, when you are in the high wakes, high volatility, extreme fear. Because once it's greed, then you know, stocks probably will be much higher. Then if you add, doesn't make any sense. Okay. All right. I definitely am seeing a correlation, Sean, with us being out traveling last week. And market returns, everything was down over 2%. I don't remember that ever happening since we started doing this. It's been a while. Yeah. So, we just stay put. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so SPY was down 2.5%. QQQ down 2.62. The Diamonds down 2.11. IWM small caps down 2.54. And Dow down almost 7% of the year. So that is not good. 
Um, and then the VIX spiking. Bitcoin, the only thing moving higher now, up almost 107% um, for the year, which is just insane to say out loud. Um, so, yeah, I don't know uh, exactly what to make of Bitcoin moving uh, higher here, but I do have a, a chart on Marathon Digital and we do have Coinbase reporting this week. So mm -hmm. definitely interesting stuff there. I don't know. We'll see what happens, you guys. Here's the earnings. Uh, what's on the page, Sean? What are you looking at? Well, what am I not looking at? I suppose. Um, <laughs> SoFi, <laughs> SoFi is definitely one I'm looking at. And the, before they open tomorrow, so we can't really talk about too much on that. Um, AMD, of course. I think Kay's going to talk about. Um, obviously, Palantir jumped off the page for me. I, I follow that quite closely. Um, but I mean, there's so much to choose from. I, I mean, I could go on for hours probably with earnings. But yeah, that's the main three I'd say. And obviously, Apple as well for the overall market. But yeah, those three. How about you, Kay? I think um, Sean touched most of the stocks that I'm looking at as well. Uh, definitely Arista Network is part of the uh, checklist. I'm also looking at Roku, Qualcomm, PayPal, just to get a sense of how it's happening in the fintech space. Shopify and Block are also my uh, go-to stocks, yep, especially yep. when I'm running option strategies. So yeah, those are mine. And I do have a couple uh, you know, investing stocks that I do for long-term, like McDonald's and Starbucks. So keeping an eye on those as well. It's You can lose track of all of these. I mean, we're like the exact opposite of just a few weeks ago when there was nothing to talk about. Exactly. Financials kicked it off and here we are. You guys named a bunch of names. I'll add in Mercado Libre and Albemarle, both after the close on Wednesday. Um, big names that I'd like to pay attention to. Caterpillar and McDonald's before that. So McDonald's Monday before the open, Caterpillar Tuesday. Um, I, you know, McDonald's has really fallen off. Staples have fallen off and... If you look at the Staples ETF, looking for support um, at this level, what would I have that level? I actually just have this in my notes from this morning. It's going through all of these sectors. Yeah, uh, 66 is the level for XLP, which is the Staples. It's got Costco, Walmart, Pepsi, Coke, McDonald's, all those names. So I'm, I'm curious how the week will start off with McDonald's in that kind of uh, in that sector. And, and it's been just really weak as of late. So looking for support. Um, and then I've got DraftKings Thursday. You know I'm going to talk about DraftKings, so we'll get to that. All right. So let's kick off with SPY this week. Sean, we've both been out, so I don't think it's fair for either one of us to start. So with that, I'm going to hand it to you. <laughs> what do you think about SPY this week? Thanks. Um, well, for the little uh, kind of you know research that I've done today, pretty much, um, we can see that there's a bit of negative action. I say a bit of negative action, pretty, pretty harsh last couple of weeks, I think. Um, but definitely the key level of 410 here, I think. So you can hear, see it before the resistance and the support in the past. We can see with the blue highlighted areas and obviously the blue line as well. Um, one thing that I don't like is it's breaking below the 50 moving average. And I'll cover this in my newsletter today. Um, obviously, links are obviously down below for that. Um, so that's something to be wary about. But it hasn't confirmed the break. Now, for me personally, obviously, it has with the daily, but with the, the weekly, it needs to come back up and we claim that 50 and that's not a break for me. So we need like an extra candle to confirm the break is what I'm trying to say. Um, but obviously, if we break down to the downside, break 410, I think 393 is definitely in contention with that kind of 200 million average level, which would be quite a drop um, considering how much we've come up this year. I mean, we're kind of around 370 at the beginning of the year. So we're basically taking away all of those gains. Um, so it'll be, it'll be interesting, that's for sure. But I, I think this is where we, you know, bounce if we bounce, you know, in inverted commas. So not financial advice. Yeah, it looks like a lot of uh, touch points right at this support level at right around 410. Yeah, 410.68 you've got. I noticed the the retest of that trend line too, right after breaking that trend line. Mm, and exactly. you got that retest and then move lower. So it's 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 almost forming uh, the kind of patterns you expect to see before the drop lower, right? It didn't just knife and then, you know, look for recovery. It, it found the recovery and then rejected at that trend line. So um, yeah, I, I've got that we need to hold this. Um, I got 408.50. So right there, I mean, is is the 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 lowest I want to see it go. Otherwise, 398 comes into play. And mm -hmm. that three handle, that's scary, right? That could mess with people's heads. What about you, Kay? What are you seeing out there in spy world? So interestingly, um, every time we talk about spy, we have always seen the... The hedging that happens on SPY on the put to call, right, is generally over two. Next entire week, it's 
in the ones and it even drops below 1.95 on 111 1, which is what tuesday wednesday something like that and mm-hmm. i'll tell you why it correlates with jerome powell speaking federal interest rate decision which most likely 95% there won't be a hike this month so if that goes in line we could see a bounce back Yep, that is definitely the pivot point, right? See what we get. Um, I, I agree with you, though. I don't think anybody's expecting um, anything in the way of a rate change, but Oops. everybody's going to be paying attention. So we'll have to see how that goes. And w- one other thing I wanted to add is so a lot of times, like we are pushing for rate hike. If you think about it, one of the downsides of a higher rate is not just everything becoming expensive for the company, it's also for the federal government to pay interest on their debt. Right. So the higher interest rate it is, they have to pay more, you know, in the interest to their uh, people who hold their debt. So, Yeah, there's so many factors that come into play here. And uh, I think we're seeing it across the board, whether it's B2B or, you know, consumers that, I mean, think about a consumer standpoint, you can't refi your house. How many people are using refinancing your house to, uh, you know, spend more money, right? Put in the swimming pool or buy a car or send the kids to college and all these different things. Now you have to find other ways to, to get that money and, um, or at least pay more uh, for the interest. So yeah, different, different scenario we're heading into here. But despite that, we're in an uptrend still. Um, it's just a little bit precarious. And I think the cues might give us a little bit you know, more to talk about, but kind of in the same realm. What do you think, Sean? Yeah, so for me, I'm very interested in this kind of zone. Uh, you can see 330 to 334. You can you can see the kind of price action that's happened in the in the pink circles kind of throughout the chart. Um, but obviously, the main thing you can see is that we're breaking down from this channel. Um, and obviously, it looks worse on the daily, of course. Um, but with the weekly, again, as I alluded to on, on, on the SPY, if we can have a good week and come back up to kind of that 348, 349 level and reclaim that channel, then that's not a confirmation of a break for me, at least on the weekly. Um, daily obviously tells different stories, but I want to take a step back and see where we really are, especially going forward. Now, we know that tech obviously runs the market these days, so this would be the main indicator that I would be looking at, um, kind of going off SPY in terms of market direction. I don't know if you have any opinions of that, of course, but the QQQ does tend to you know, run the market now, at least in my opinion. Um, but yeah, that 330 to 334 with that 50 moving average, which is the blue line kind of coming in with, with that, that would be my ultimate support. And I may actually kind of go into TQQQ on that kind of, uh, if it was to happen, of course, um, I may go into TQQQ with a kind of a smaller position um, than that if I would to do like a normal position on QQQ. But yeah, what, what are your thoughts on uh, on this? Okay, you want to go first on this one? I think um, Apple is the key here for QQQ. Yeah, yeah. I disagree with that. And yep. When's that earnings? We just Thursday. Thursday after close, yeah. So if your Jerome Powell comes in line and Apple beats everything and has a great guidance, that's it. Let's see it. Oh, I like it setting up for something nice. I mean, honestly, there's been so much negativity. And last week, we even dipped into extreme fear. Um, I'm not saying we're going to get upside for the, the whole quarter, but I think the coming week uh, kind of sets up for potential upside here, especially if there's no, if, if you know, Powell's kind of a nothing burger and then we get some some positivity out of, out of Apple. I agree. Um, I've got the same levels here for the Qs, uh, ex- right where you've got this for support as key support. I think that um, maybe at, let's see, what did I say? Oh, yeah, you know, I was mentioning... In my to myself, I guess, in my notes this morning, <laughs> um, that we could see a pop to you know three fifty five, but even that you could run into um, some resistance. So I think there's more resistance to the upside than um, there, and there's more opportunity to the downside currently where we're at. But I like your support level, Sean. Good awesome. stuff. It's exciting stuff. Yeah, we're gonna have to find out. Well, let's keep mm. it rolling. You've got Neo back in the charts. I'm excited to hear it. Yeah, so this is a bit of a one kind of take for this one. It's basically the monthly chart, and you can see we're kind of dangerously around that trend line. Um, and you can see I've got a DB question mark there, and that's the kind of pink line of 690, and that could possibly be a double bottom. Um, 
now if i was to obviously if it was to break the trend line of course that would be quite bad but obviously looking for that 694 double bottom is basically what i'm trying to say um really simple this week i think for neo this is all i wanted to kind of point out obviously with the daily with the hourly and all that it's all over the place you can't really make much sense of it um so i want to take a really big big step back and you can see this is all the way back from 2019 um, but these kind of trend lines do work for for the, not these type of stocks, but kind of stocks in general is what I'm trying to say, um, for the Great. ultimate long term. So, yeah, a bounce here. Um, I don't know where the bounce would go to. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm hoping for kind of a, a very low point of 690, essentially, is what I'm trying to get to here. Now, I don't know if you have anything to put on this chart. I mean, there's not really much else to talk about, but I'm happy to obviously hand it over to you guys. I have one note here, and that is the... The reverse here, the reversal in the, that happened right at the 20 month uh, moving average, it looks like, um, that's that's a tweezer top uh, formation, right? So usually that's followed by more selling. And we've gotten that, right? Two months of selling afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm hoping that that holds up because, it, you know, if you kind of look back into the 2019 timeframe, it was it was harsher, obviously. It wasn't like an exact reversal of the prior candle. It was a double, you know, double that amount. But then it continued to sell off and move lower. And um, I, I'm I'm just a little bit wary of that, but I like your support level. If we can get a double bottom, and it might check a little bit lower even, but if it can hold and recover quickly, um, yeah, then that, I, think, I think that's constructive in the long term. Uh, we're right at that spot, though, and maybe the trend line holds. I don't know. I mean, that's what you're showing here, right? It's right at that trend line. So hopefully, yeah. hopefully that adds some additional support and uh, get a good buying opportunity and move higher. I would wait for then, the support to show up though. Yeah. And also we still have two days left of October. So um, that could easily kind of bounce up above the trend line in the next couple of days if the HSI was to look good or if the general market was to look good as well. So it's not all doom and gloom for this month. Yeah. Mostly is, but... It's not ordered to be close. <laughs> when, when is the earnings coming up? Some somewhere around end mid mid November end November. It'll be about. They haven't released it yet. Not that I know of anyway. Um, okay. Been out of the loop. But I think it'll be about mid to late November. Yeah. Normally yeah. is. Got it. We have to keep an eye on deliveries still, right? Got to close out the year strong. Yeah, exactly. And the deliveries this this month haven't looked great so far in terms of registrations. But obviously that's not deliveries. So we'll find out that Wednesday as well. So it'll be interesting to see. All right, thanks for Neo here, Sean. What else we got? Ah, Palantir. Oh, favorite one. <laughs> yeah. Now you can see there's a lot going on in this chart. <laughs> um, but Palantir, I think we'll probably start with the fact that we have earnings coming up on Thursday um, before hours. Um, typically, before hours haven't been great. But I suppose it doesn't really matter. Um, but after hours have normally brought the kind of exciting um, earnings reports. Now, you can see in the little white box there just below um, Nate's name, uh, just above Nate's name, sorry, Palantir post earnings movement. The the average is thirteen point seven percent. Obviously, it's not going to move that exactly. But I've written, I've marked on the on the chart there the green line and the the red line kind of diagonal. Oh, you've got a mouse on there. That's great. You can use that. Direct it. <laughs> um, but yeah, you've got the the green line and the red line on there as well. And you can see that that the the red line takes you down to kind of thirteen dollars, which wouldn't be very good. Um, and the, the green line takes you up to kind of 17, which has been quite a, a testing point in the past. And we spoke about it even a, a few weeks ago. Um, it looks like we've broken down there, come up, retested it, as you can see in the last four or five days. Um, but price action in the near term makes, you know, there's no point even talking about it. But I'm basically just talking about earnings. If we get good earnings and we post good net income, that's four quarters in a row. And that is basically entry to S&P 500, or at least they can apply for it. They'll probably get it considering their uh, status within the world, pretty much right. um, yeah. working with um, such, you know, loads and loads of industries. They have TAM, I believe it's called, Total Addressable Market. Um, but yeah, that's exciting for them. But if they can really post a good revenue, even if it's just a slight beat, especially in this, um, in this economy, I think that would be amazing. Um, I'm going to stop talking now, but yeah, the, the near term, I'm not looking at. I'm just basically waiting for earnings on Thursday, see what happens and probably trade off of that. I don't know about UK, but I feel like all's right in the world again. We're talking about Neo and Palantir back on the trading triangle. I mean, things feel better. I felt a little bit off last week. <laughs> yeah, I guess you know we, we need we need these uh, retail stocks to do especially well, and because I, if you think about it, retail stocks also also a sentiment, 
when the stock market gets into extreme greed, you tend to see the retail investors pulling back. They don't talk about retail stocks as much. So companies like Palantir, SoFi, they need to come back in terms of the retail enthusiasm to come back. Yep. Got to find some levels of support here and uh, look for the leaders, even in the retail, uh, you know, popular retail names, I think. And I think Palantir is one of those that, um, yeah, just for what it's worth, is it was very popular amongst retail traders and then also gained a lot of institutional attention. And so you've got this kind of nice uh, combination going on there with some additional money flowing in. So yeah, super interesting spot. It- it's basically instead of, you know, generally it happens, institutional holders hold the stock and then retail gets on it. Companies like Palantir, SoFi, Tesla is the other way around. It's the retail holding it, bringing it to the forefront and then institutions getting on board. Oh, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Well, looking forward to earnings, Sean. This is a good one. Yeah, me too. Um, obviously, you can find me on Twitter, the normal platform, X. I keep saying Twitter, even <laughs> two months afterwards. Um, you can find me on X, obviously, talking about trading, not so much recently, but I'll be getting back into it this week. You, don't worry about that. Obviously, YouTube, again, have been quite quiet on there recently because of the holidays, but I'll be getting a few more technical analysis videos out this week, um, especially related to earnings, of course, and see where it kind of makes the moves. Um, do one on, on end phase, I think. Um, I believe it's quite an interesting point, at least for me. And obviously, a newsletter I released uh, this morning about SPY, QQQ, and IWM. So kind of a macro look at the kind of um, short term, at least in the in the markets. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for me. I'll hand it over to Nate. Yeah, be sure to check out Sean's newsletter. It's good stuff. I've been enjoying it myself. And I'm also enjoying our new format here that we've got on the stream. Uh, in particular, the fact that my name stays up in the bottom left of these charts, no matter who's on here. <laughs> well, you are the host. I'll, get, I'll get that fixed. That's good stuff. All right. Thanks again, Sean. And um, I'll jump into my charts here. I've got two, as always, and Marathon Digital is the first one. Um, so we mentioned Bitcoin is up almost 107% for the, for the year, which I can't believe it, even as I say it again. And uh, the miners, though, haven't the Bitcoin, the uh, crypto miners and whatnot have not really um, kept up, right? So they've been selling off. You can see in this chart here, Marathon really had a massive sell off um, after a huge run, which we took advantage of earlier in the year. And uh, then we found some support at 7 Eleven. So I like that. And I started paying attention again. We broke the downtrend, not aggressively, but. Now we're seeing this kind of higher highs and higher lows and marching higher here. So I do like that. I do like the fact that um, we've got the 50-day moving average in sight. It's not breaking above, though, so we need to get there. And once we get above, I think that the, we could get some real momentum. But that's key. I think we got to get above $9 first, which is right around where that 50-day moving average is. Um, but overall, yeah, we got RSI above 50 again. And things are looking kind of positive for Marathon Digital. Coinbase reporting Thursday. I like. I honestly can't stand Coinbase. It's a personal thing. So I just never even trade it because I think my bias gets in the way. Maybe that's a good lesson, right? Like I really dislike Coinbase. So every time I trade it, I just want to short it no matter what's going on. <laughs> it's not a good way to approach trading. So um, yeah, so Marathon Digital here. Sean, what do you think about this chart and this move higher? <laughs> Very emotional for me, Nate. Don't let me get that. <laughs> No, I like this chart, and that, what I what I really like is the where it is now um, could, for a breakout trade potentially. So you've got those three points very recently touching around that kind of eight, what was it eight eighty six level? Where yeah, we are basically seven. now, yeah. um, and I like it to basically start scaling in. Um, you may not agree, and that's probably not the, the best way to trade. But I know we are below the two moving averages. But you touched on um, obviously Bitcoin moving, um, and it's moving over the weekend as well, so that's positive. Um, but yeah, I think scaling in, and obviously if we do get a breakout of 1068, when I say scaling in, I'm talking about very, very small. So starting yeah. at a very small position, the kind of edge in the market, beta, that kind of thing. Um, so it is pretty much a gamble. And obviously stop loss around that kind of 711 level. Um, so again, quite risky, I suppose. But yeah, I think scaling in and basically getting that move early from 1064, probably not what I was supposed to say, but that's how I would do this one. <laughs> I think you're right. But what do you think, Jay? I'll get back to my, my thoughts on that in a second. 
So I think um, I, I agree with that, but I think I'll wait for the nine before even I get into any CSP position. And um, the implied volatility on Mara is actually pretty good. It's 123% uh, and above. So over 100% volatility means that the premiums are amazing at this, these levels. But the problem is I think I don't see a clear trend here unless you guys tell me otherwise. So I would want to wait for that $9 before I feel comfortable start getting into the CSP and the wheel strategy over here. So I like the uh, waiting and being patient, like you're saying, but I actually, um, something that I've been talking more and more about with other traders is, is what you were mentioning, Sean, is scaling in and starting small. And then as we get above nine, which K is exactly what you're saying as well, is once you get above to those key levels, then you can really add in and, and, and up your position size. And I think that's a, the opposite of what a lot of new traders do. So if you're thinking about, you know, you go in with conviction on your very first trade when you're in a spot like this where, you know, there's still some resistance above. Well, if it if it reverses and you, you take that hit, right? But if it's if it's a reversal and you take the small loss and you get out, no harm, no foul, where yeah. once it gets above these key moving averages, you get more of the probabilities in your favor and you start adding in, you know, you actually are adding to the winners as you move higher versus, yeah. you know, adding as it goes lower. So yeah. I, I like that approach. I think that with Bitcoin um, kind of doing what it's doing, um, we've got some opportunity here in the space. So I wanted to bring up Marathon. But let me ask yeah. you this question. Do you think that there is any danger to Mara if Coinbase reports poor earnings? Oh, that's a great question. And I didn't look at the correlation between the two. I don't know that there's huge um, correlation, except for if Coinbase were to say something that was more um, general towards Bitcoin in the space, I think, then, then yeah, you would have that, that um, sympathy kind of trading. But I think in general, they kind of trade a little bit separately and more in lockstep with Bitcoin. Got it. Yeah. Although recently, again, the, the, you know, they haven't really followed Bitcoin as it made this massive push, um, you know, lately from 27K, I think it was at, to now 34. 36, so 30, 34, 36, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's quite a move. And then next up, DraftKings, right? So earnings this week, it's sitting on support. Look, if you're looking for an opportunity to buy into DraftKings, this is the setup. I mean, I don't know how else to put it. I'm not telling you to take a trade, obviously, <laughs> um, but we've got the 150-day moving average here as support right at the 2641 lower uh, level of the trading band that we've been in here. Um, you know, it got sloppy and got above 30, 32. Um, by that, I mean $30.32 and it, all the way up to $32. But I don't really think we're that 32 level is, um, you know, really consistent with the range. I think 30 is kind of the psych level. We've seen it rejecting there pretty quickly once it gets there and more recently in October. So um, $26 to 30, that's quite the range you can trade. You can make some good money there. And um, you can also sell some cash secured puts here, if I'm not mistaken, Kay. Yep. Um, get some decent implied volatility juice in the, the premiums. 123% for end of next week. However, you got to be careful because generally drafting and Mara and SoFi, they always have a good, uh, always more positive put to call ratio. This time for 1103 expiration, we have 1.33, which means that there are more puts. So you have 26,000 plus puts versus only 19,000 or 20,000 call options for next week. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah, this is a, it's one of those trades where we're going into earnings and we've got a good setup. So high risk, high reward. You want to respect your stops. What do you think, Sean? Uh, so for me, I'm looking at this trend line that starts kind of end of July um, from the highest point of the chart, kind of going down with the, with the other highs um, coming from then. And that'll be my kind of entry point if it was to break that trend line. Nothing much to add to, from what you've said. Um, I think you, you nailed it on the on top of the nail there. <laughs> nailed on top of the nail. Hit on. Like it. That's where you want to nail it. <laughs> <laughs> Hit on the nail. Hit on. I don't know what I was saying. Um, but yeah, I think. Hit the nail on the head. 
that's the one. <laughs> yeah, it's, I've had too much time off. Um, but yeah, we, that, that's what I'd be looking at. The kind of trend line coming down. If we can break that, maybe we test it. You can see a little bit of a volume shelf around there as well. That kind of 28, kind of 29 yep. level. And so we can break through that. Obviously, we can go up to kind of 30, like you said, psychological. Um, and above that, I think even better. I'll just hold it. From, yeah, from you know, that trend. The trend line you're talking about um, has a uh, it's right around that 50 day moving average. So I think that that would be a key level, and I think it's a good call. I wasn't really looking at that downtrend, the lower highs, but I think you're right, Sean. I'll be focusing on that. Yeah. So one one more data point that I I think if you're going to trade DraftKing, whether you're going to do options or just regular shares, so the implied move in the earnings week is about 10 percent. So looking at what three bucks plus minus, that would be your implied move. Of course, it can go more or less, but that's generally the implied move that happens on an average. Good stuff. All right. Well, let's see if uh, we get those moves. We get a, a big trading day uh, uh, on earnings with DraftKings. Um, you know me. I like to trade heading into earnings usually and then kind of close positions out and then reassess afterwards. Um, if we get a good bounce Monday and we hold this level, I'll probably get in and Maybe leave a few runners, um, take some profits, and then maybe leave a runner or two. We'll see how that works. But that's my mindset heading in. Thought I'd share that with everybody this week. And then, of course, you can find me on, Sean, I'm going to call it Twitter for like eight years. So don't worry about it. You can find me on X. And uh, also, I'm going to have Sean go first so it reminds me every week to see if that helps me. And then uh, Traders Education is uh, my newsletter published on Substack. Uh, do subscribe. Got over 500 subscribers now. Uh, it's free every week. And I try to add in some audio clips throughout the week as well, just talking about different positions and uh, sectors. I like to do sector analysis. So good stuff there if you're interested. And then I write for Wolf Financial as well. Um, I'm on his spaces throughout the week. And also every Sunday, got a nice post in his newsletter as his lead writer. So hopefully you can check me out all those areas and let's get to k's charts next we've got amd which i'm glad you got what are you, what yeah. are you thinking about amd so amd reports earning on 10 31 is going to be one of the most watched earnings uh, anybody who has followed intel's earning last week it came out amazing quarterly earnings they are tying up with nvidia and even though amd is supposed to be have a weaker demand as per a lot of reports Analysts and many other writers are expecting that because Intel had such a strong showing, it could spill into AMD as well. So that that takes care of AMD. Couple things to keep in mind: you have a 0.68 EPS estimated, and you have a, a 5.6 billion dollar revenue. That's what expected. Generally, the implied move is plus minus seven percent, about eight, nine, maybe ten dollars up, down, plus minus from here onwards. Now. Um, I know that we didn't talk about last week, so I didn't mention this on the trading triangle, but if you follow me on my YouTube, we talked about how we were expecting the 20 day moving average to have a crossover at 50 day moving average, kind of creating a golden cross so that stock can actually go up. However, beautiful part about stock market is that it will humble you as soon as you try to, you know, think that you got it, you know, you got the stock market down, right? So that's what happened with us, right? We expected the AMD to go above, but it actually crashed back. You saw this major gap down uh, with this big selling pressure on, I think that was 24th or 25th, I think one of those days. And it broke through our $102 level. Now, 102 has been like our stalwart support line for a long, long, long time. As you can see, we have, it's on the FIB level here. It also broke through our trend line. And if you notice, the trend line is hugging very nicely with the 200-day moving average. So now the stock is below the 200-day moving average. The current put to call is 0.7 with 80% implied volatility. And with earnings coming up, we know the generally the volume at least to, you know goes double. Cases of SoFi where the volume can go three times, uh, at least with AMD, the volume does go to two times. We have seen in the past. It's kind so, of crazy, right? Because it's, it's not a small company. Exactly. It brings 5.6 billion a quarter. So for four quarters, looking at about 20 billion, right? Um, that's a lot of money uh, this company makes. So I think in in this scenario, one of the key elements is the 9356 on the FIB level is, of course, going to act as a support level. We saw a bounce at that level. So if the implied volatility, if the move is expected, I hope, 
and if things go line up, we can expect it to go back above the trend line. That's what we want to hope happens. And the 200 day becomes like a support level for AMD. And it can happen. If you can see the previous earnings, we can see these major gap ups with AMD. Anything in sem semiconductor can you know, pull that off. But in case of a downside, we would want to see 9356 hold. If not, you can go all the way down to 84 because there isn't much happening between those two levels. That is what I see, at least on the chart. I still have a couple open trades on AMD with one or two being one of my strike prices. So all I'm doing is I'm rolling it week after week and collecting that premium. So that, what do you guys see? Yeah, I mean, I, just touching on your kind of negative point there, breaking the 9340, there isn't much in the way, is there, to 84? So that could be quite a nice play if that was to obviously pan out in the days to come. But I think for me personally, it's waiting for the earnings, like you said. Um, and then if we were to break up, and obviously holding all the moving averages, that's the kind of where I'd be looking at. Um, AMD is not really one I normally touch. I have traded it a few times. Um, but yeah, I, I like your point on the fact that Intel obviously posted really well on, on Thursday or Wednesday, whatever it was. Um, so if that can follow, if this can follow that, then that'd be amazing. Um, but that's all I can really add on this, but you, you touched on, on it really well. You know, I was looking at NVIDIA and it's also at like the bottom of its range right near 400 and looking to bounce. So I'm really curious if that, um, you know, that 400 level for NVIDIA is broken if we do get kind of negative news from AMD and if it, and it has any, you know, trading and sympathy. So, um, yeah, but AMD is, is at a really key spot, I think, in semiconductors across the board. Like I was looking at SMH, the ETF for the, the sector and. I mean, it just rolled over pretty hard. So we're looking for some support here somewhere. And I see a lower low being formed uh, relative to the more the most recent low. So, yeah, need to get some footing and make a higher high for AMD and get back up, back in the positive trend. Because, yeah, the trend is definitely to the downside recently, right? Just 100%. looking at that chart. Yeah, 100%. It's in the downside. And AMD is one of the most liquid stocks in the options world. It's in the top 10 you know, most traded options, um, you know, every single week. So if this is the trend, then it definitely has an impact on both Intel and other semiconductor stocks. Yeah. Just uh, one thing as well, the SMH, I just pulled it up while you guys were talking. It's, yeah. on, on, it's literally just touching its 200 moving average. I don't know yeah. Yeah. Already, right there. It's literally, yeah. literally on it. So that's interesting to see. A lot of stocks are either touching or actually have broken through the 200 moving average. And this kind of takes us back to the point like we are trading, but we are also thinking about long term investment. So a lot of times, you know, you can start to dollar cost average slowly into your long term position, especially for stocks that are below the 200 day moving average. I think with an ETF, though, sometimes it becomes more prevalent as well rather than the stock. Yep. Because that's what people are really looking at, the actual industry itself. So I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, agreed. And I like what you're saying, Kay. The you kind of shift back and forth, right? If you're at least for me, anyways. I'm yeah, trading, yeah. trading nice moves. Everything's clean. I'll, I'll be trading more actively when things are less clean and pulling back. I find my long term portfolio getting more of my attention. Right? Yeah, you you, you got to shift your love, you know. Yep, absolutely. So that's yeah, it for the AMD. Ooh, All right. Next one is Block, ticker symbol SQ. This is also reporting earnings, and we I have covered this many, many times on uh, on the trading triangle. Uh, they report earning on 11.2 after close. Their EPS is 0.46 expected with a revenue of 5.4 billion. So in the same range as AMD, so not a small company either. Um, their implied move is a little bit higher than AMD, so they're about 9.2%. So you can expect about a four or five dollar um, a move at least, you know, up in the up or downside. A key thing to note in this company is that they are having a 26% year over year growth in the revenue, and they are a profitable company from a non-GAAP perspective. So, and so if you if you zoom out for a second, don't look at the chart. This company in the fintech space is a pretty solid company as compared to some of the other companies that are in the fintech space. Um, SoFi is a bank. They are not a bank, but they have both the hardware and the software side, just like Apple uh, from the vertical integration standpoint. So the cash app, point of sale, uh, hardware system. So a pretty good, uh, you know, robust portfolio of products. So that's the, like, the fundamental side of the company. Now, if you look at this chart, we have making lower highs 
you know, since I don't know how many months now, actually since last year, lower highs, it's been on a downward trend altogether. So we stepped back. We said, you know what, uh, let's let's take a little zoom, or zoom out view. And then we had this downtrend line, which was respected for a while now. But on Friday, we actually broke slightly and then went back up the trend line. So that 38.91 and that gap down is not a great sign that we are seeing so much selling pressure happening across all fintech space. I think all fintech companies are literally, you know, having the worst nightmare in, in a while now, right? <laughs> it's been rough. Uh, it's been rough. It's been very, very rough. But still, because of the retail investors uh, in there, the put to call is look at the 0. 0.7. Generally, in this scenario, you should see 1.1, 1.5. You should be more bearish, but put to call doesn't say that. And because of also because of that, the implied volatility is 1.142%. So um, it's, it's going to be a risky. If you are going to trade this, I would only trade it if in the options world, if you're going to open CSPs, only do it if you want to hold square in your long-term portfolio. Don't do it because it implied volatility is 142% and you're going to get a good premium because if you don't believe in the stock, you don't you don't like the stock, I wouldn't touch the stock because this is not a great setup. It We can go further down from here. Yeah, I think those are good, good words of wisdom, Kay. I mean, we talk a lot about selling cash secure puts and bringing in those, that premium, but you do want to make sure you have conviction um, in the stock because you could end up owning it, right? And okay. You're saying not just to focus on the yield. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. At the bottom of this uh, this downtrend, could get some support, but yeah. kind of kind of a dicey spot. What do you think, Sean? So the only thing I've I've actually pointed out something positive, um, would you believe? Hey. I've RSI <laughs> divergence. I don't know if you've guys have heard this before. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah. but it's where the RSI kind of turns the other way to where the stock is going. So you can see at the moment um, the last two lows. So low we've got recently is kind of beginning of October, maybe just the turn of it. And obviously the low we've just set on Friday. Um, compared to the RSI, where we had the low again with that kind of middle of October, we're kind of above that on the RSI. Now, when that happens, it kind of it's more like a trigger, more like an indicator to, to people obviously to kind of go the opposite direction. So in this case, it would be the stock to go up. Um, an example of that is I've tried to find one throughout this chart, and you kind of can see it. I think, where was it? Where, uh, yeah, so just after July, um, just basically the whole of July up until August, mm -hmm. you can see where the RSI touches the top, comes back down, sets a lower high on the RSI. But if you look at the stock, the stock actually sets a, a higher high. Um, so they're kind of opposite. Oh, and yeah. obviously that would have, that would oh, have yes. been a great time to invest or you know sell the stock, basically, or place a short position. And you would have made a ton of money because look at how fast it dropped. Obviously, that's not always the case. Uh, but it is an indicator that traders use. It's not one I use all the time, um, but it's one I'm looking at more and more, trying to get used to it, because obviously it's not cemented every time. But it's just something that I saw on this chart. Um, if we can set, if we can basically go up on the RSI in the next few days, especially with decent earnings coming up on Thursday, I think you said, yeah. um, if we can get that RSI ticken up, that is a really good indicator for possible positive price action going forward. Um, I probably said so many words. Sorry, Kay. No, no, no. This, this is great. Because <laughs> I think... I think that's the most, I mean, Sean, yeah. you got my attention over here, by the way. Like, exactly. You're welcome. Right. Do you with me? I mean, you, you, like, you touched really on the fundamentals. So you touched on the fundamentals as well. So all of that kind of combining kind of, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, you got my yeah. attention there, Sean. That's that's a, the RSI divergence is uh, something I have not looked at in a long time. Okay, is that something you've traded? I, I I mean, I know about it, but I have I did not even think about that until Sean brought it up. Yeah, that's a really good observation. I like that. That's, and it's funny because this is really not – Kay, you and I were both like, ah, it's very negative, but that's a – Yeah, 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 exactly. I like it. Yeah, it looks good. You know, listen, I mean, honestly, this this is why we have this session, right? All, everybody looks at a chart in a different way and it just pops out. Some things just, just pop out to you, which, you know, maybe others are not seeing it. So this is this is amazing. Um, if, the, if the earnings really come out well for Block or at least in line with the street – we shouldn't be, you know, I think we are, this stock has been thrashed, man. This used to be over $200. Now let's look at it, 38 91 It's down there, it's COVID lows almost, with 35 Yeah, It's this. Yeah, it's there's a lot, of, a lot of stocks getting there too. Thanks, kid. That was a good one. Yeah. 
Yeah. So as usual, I'm also on Twitter with InvestK. I do post weekly videos. Uh, generally, I do a weekly trading video. Uh, it's always posted on Sundays. I also tend to do, if I get time, I tend to do other videos as well on stock analysis. So check me out on YouTube. And I also have a newsletter where you can sign up. It's free. Um, and I post on a weekly, bi-weekly, monthly basis, depending on how much time I can pull off to write something. I like it. This has been great, you guys. I like the new setup we've got. I'm going to mess around with a little bit of a banner. Let us know what other stocks you guys might want to hear about in coming weeks. We do this every Sunday. Thanks for joining the Trading Triangle. And before we get out of here, uh, do make sure you smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I appreciate you helping us get the word out to others. We like doing this every week, like I said, and it's a good time for everybody, I think. Um, heading into the next week, I mentioned it. We had some some pullbacks, a lot of selling, a lot of uh, extreme fear. We touched, well, not a lot, but we touched on the extreme fear. So this week, I think we some, see some setups. Look for key support and look for those bounces first before getting too aggressive. And then uh, I think in this market, I'm still taking profits pretty quickly because uh, they're getting swiped right out from under you if you don't. So that's that's my my mentality. I mean, I'm going to have to sit on my hands Monday because after not trading last week, Sean, are you like this? Like you're just anxious to get back at it? I am, but I'm also quite apprehensive as well. So I'm going to be looking at a bit more of my swing trades, a bit more of a, a long-term perspective. I mentioned before the call, like end phase is one of those I'm looking at as well. So that's kind of uh, shouts off the page to me. I mean, the sun's not going away. So, um, but yeah, I keep going for tangents today. But anyway, yeah, swing trading and long-term trading. I'm not going to do so much day trading this week. I might play on a few earnings, but... That's about it. Plenty of earnings to pick from. How about UK? Well, I, I think uh, my only take is that um, I like playing earnings, um, but it's not for everybody. And I, I don't think you should be playing earnings if you have not done it before. And if you want to, definitely take a look at the implied move, generally the average implied move, and have that as a buffer. Um, but yeah, it, it, earnings are binary. So it's a gamble. In a sort, actually, it is a gamble, I would say. Uh, so sit out if you're not comfortable with that. Well, hey on guys. top of that, with, with earnings, obviously we don't always play before earnings. Sometimes we play after earnings as well. I mean, yeah. we're not talking about YOLO calls and that kind of stuff. It's yeah. kind of how it plays out after. So I think maybe, Nate, you're about to say that. I'm not too sure. That's exactly what I was going to say. So that's oh, perfect. Sorry. No, that's, oh, no, the, no apologies. We are in sync. <laughs> this means it's con some confluence. Yes. And uh, that's a good thing. So, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to the coming week, you guys. Notice I brought the bricks back. Yes, I see uh, that. Uh, I couldn't handle all that selling. So I had to bring the bricks back. <laughs> I'm hoping it's some support. <laughs> Provide support for the oh, markets. Yeah. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but hey, everybody, thanks for tuning in. If you missed it, we're going to have the, the live recording posted on our YouTube channel. Again, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Find us on X, formerly Twitter, and ask any questions you like. And uh, yeah, we'll be talking to you guys throughout the week and have a great week trading, everybody. All right. Take care. See you next week. Thank you. See you later.